Welcome back, y'all. It's time for another Starbase Summary. We've got a special Starbase Summary for you here, because we did a flyover. Jack and Mary actually hopped into a plane and got some aerial shots that you'll be seeing largely featured in the summary here. But let's kick it off with some of the work on the Booster QD hood. You've seen some grinding and welding happening to that massive shield that protects the uh, Booster Quick Disconnect. Here's some roofing, I guess for certain values of roof, being installed on Tower 2. You can see that big armored sheet of metal. On the back side here, we're going to hop up to look at Pad B's OLM. That, is, of course, is the launch mount that will go over to that second tower. Orbital? Yeah, probably. Hopefully at some point it will get there. But we've seen a lot of work happening around here. Down to finishing moves, not a lot of big pieces moving around. You know, massive beams or anything like that. It's all smaller detail work as they finish off that uh, water-cooled top plate and the other parts of the launch mount. So continuing to watch that, you know the drill. Watch for the scaffolding to go down, and that's going to rig. That's going to tell us that they're probably going to start moving that thing when we see scaffolding go down. For all of the yabba dabba do fans in the comments, there's the flame diverter piping. I, don't, I didn't know that was going to date myself, but whatever. I guess Flintstones weren't a thing in the 2000s. A little bit of a ring scooting around the back of the yard there. There you can see it in the distance being lifted up and moved around on that wider shot. And we're going to get a shot here from Star Factory as well, a cool nighttime time-lapse shot with some cars going past. Always interesting to sneak a peek in through the glass. They've put in these large windows so that we can see what's happening in the Star Factory. Back there in the background, you see those, they look like Toblerones, like shiny metal Toblerones. It's got that orange tag in the upper right corner, dead middle of the screen. Looks like a chine segment on the bottom of a booster laying there. Here we've got some lifts and some barrels. There is a label on there, but I don't think we could quite get that label. There's a dome section in the background. Did I get that right? I mean, it's curved like a dome. I don't know if it quacks like a dome, but in any event, a lot of cool shots from Jack here looking into the Star Factory. Wow, but wait, there's more. More shots of the Star Factory. Good times. What do y'all think about the design of the door there? Like, is that door cool looking? Should they have just made it larger? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sort of here and there on that door. But here's Test Tank 16 in air quotes. We think that's likely what it is. But also, notice the, the tables and chairs in the foreground. Like, you can just sit and hang out in the foreground while you the people in the background work in that big, massive starship piece. We've also got some future ship nose cones there on the left-hand side, just above the orange label. You can see a forward flap of the V2 style. There's a little bit better view of it. Doesn't quite have all the tiles. Has some of the underlayment on it, but not quite fully tiled up yet. We're going to zoom in a little bit more. And there you can actually see some of the pins that attach to the tiles. They just get better and better at the tiles every time we see one of these. Which is quite often. I mean, we see them almost every day. But anyways. <laughs> Another angle. Just missing one tile there over on the side. But this is sort of the bottom of the ship. And here, it, this is a different ship, I'm going to say. Because it has way less tiles. I don't think that's the same ship from a different angle. We're sort of going down the row now looking at nose cones in various states of preparation as we look through the different windows. A little bit of nighttime work here on the Star Factory slash office connector. This is that area that goes between the Star Factory and the office building. Um, from the outside, it sort of looks continuous. It's got that continuous line of windows. From the inside, it does look like the factory sort of ends and then has an internal viewing area a balcony that sort of looks into the factory, but there's not a walkway that goes along the, the outer curtain wall there. I'm going to scoot it over. Look at that well, lighting. Look at the weird lighting in the roof of the uh, building there. It looks like they're trying to make it more futuristic. Is that cool? Is that annoying? I don't know. I haven't worked in an office like that. So uh, I would be very curious if that lighting scheme... There you go. It looks very tron Right? It's just not in blue and red. It just happens to be that sort of soft white. Uh, if that lighting is conducive to working under or sort of annoying. But what who has office lighting that they love anyways? That's not a thing. 
I don't know that very many people walk into their office and are like, man, I really love the lighting in the cube farm here. Oh, what is this? Hang on. This is up to flyover footage, apparently, but we're taxiing down the runway. This, I guess the Brownsville Airport would be my guess. And we've got the SpaceX transport plane there parked at the airport. Here's the entire port of Brownsville looking up in there. If you're watching Starbase Live today, you're seeing you saw that aircraft carrier come in. The John F. Kennedy, I think, if I got that correct, coming in for scrapping at the shipbreaking yard there. But these are all gratuitous shots of the port. Y'all like cranes? <laughs> the energy industry has cranes. I know we like looking around Starbase and we're like, wow, such cranes, much wow. Look, this is amazing. Uh, this isn't the big LNG project, but what do we got in the shot? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tower cranes there for constructing those big uh, tanks and other things around the port. Here's Massey's. This is always an interesting angle. You see that sort of oxbow lake that goes around it? I have yet to find an authoritative historical source that tells me whether that's a natural oxbow lake. Like, did the Rio Grande used to go in that big curving pattern? Oh, look, the flame trench, by the way. You can see the flame trench from the test stand there. And the plate that rolls over so they can work underneath the rocket before they put the rocket on the test stand. Anyways, that natural oxbow lake, I, I don't know if that's natural or not. Was that was the Rio Grande cut straight, or was that Rio Grande ever going through that big curving pattern? Or potentially was the curving pattern dug out at some point? I, I just don't know the answer. But we're going to move our way on the flyover up towards the production site. Look, I'll tell you one thing. I'm sort of reacting to these images in real time. It's like, it's like DOS reacts to flyover footage. But if you want the real analysis, the detailed analysis of the flyover, like that possible Starlink loader, look in the building there. That's the high bay. And you see that white box in the high bay. I think there is some thinking that is that, that might be a Starlink loader to load Starlinks into a ship. But if you want the real analysis, you want the full analysis of everything seen on the flyover, make sure you don't miss out on Starbase update that should be coming out Monday. I know the team has been doing a ton of work pouring over these images in great detail. Look at the shot of the OLM. And they're going to explain in more detail everything that you see in all of these shots. We try to get in a flyover a month or something like that. Uh, we don't fly over constantly. But we try to do some flyovers on occasion and make sure that the hole that they're putting in top of the launch mount is indeed rocket-shaped. And I can confirm that that round hole is approximately the shape of the bottom of a booster. That's my analysis. You want the full analysis, make sure you don't miss Starbase update on Monday. <laughs> Just all of the little things you can see in the yard, I cannot do them justice. I see piping. I see, wow, and then the image changed. There's that stand that they've been working on. There's a truck coming in. A lot of work. That OL, uh, the, the launch mount, should be saying OLM, is a lot further. There's a Starlink uplink in the middle of that shot there. There's the rocket garden. You have to scroll back. See if you can scroll back and find the Starlink uplink building there in the back of the yard. Look at that, though. There's the yard behi beside the Star Factory, like a little external yard, and then the temporary housing four employees like just very I guess very dense not really because it's only a single story like a single level if you wanted really dense housing you would make it multiple multiple stories but that little transportable manufactured housing is sort of the thing is that triangular hole in the upper left hand corner closed there's a lot of people thinking maybe star hopper would be lifted into that uh, triangular hole but star hopper is pretty well plugged down at its position in the parking lot there you can see it on the right hand side there's another great shot of Starhopper in the entire tank farm. Look at all the tanks in the tank farm. You really don't understand how much volume, like volume storage, there is in the tank farm till you see it from the air like this. Plus parking. Jeez, I've had to try to find a parking space along the side of Highway 4 there. And uh, parking is a bear <laughs> if you're trying to find a place to put the truck. There's a bunch of work. You see the, the trenching that's been done down there? on the bottom of your screen and then a bunch of dirt work up near where the orbital launch mount we're sort of on the wrong side to look at the uh, the launch mount here here we go chopsticks mounted and look at the big hole in the middle of the screen to the right of the tower underneath the chopsticks there that they are working on for that big flame switch. i think you can even see the glinting yeah there was a little bit of water in there i thought i saw some water glinting and then we have those excavators in the road the excavators drive up and down just 
digging out that massive area. And the sheet piles, you see the corrugated sort of views, the, the corrugated walls that go down into the holes, those sheet piles they hammer in to hold the soil on the sides that they want to stay in back away from the hole that they're digging. Again, like that was my whirlwind tour of the flyover shots. If you want the full analysis of the flyover shots, you're going to want to find Starbase update on Monday. Turn on notifications to the channel. Follow us on the social accounts because we will be doing the full analysis of the flyover of Starbase as part of our Starbase update coming Monday. Hey, that's a big hooky thing. Look at that. That's the traveling block. Apparently I've been corrected. It is not a snatch block, technically. It is a traveling block. And some differences between this block and the old block. Of course, this is what uh, the cable, singular cable, goes through multiple times on those pulleys in that block to give a massive mechanical advantage. Uh, the winches pull X amount of force, and you multiply that with the number of times the cable goes through that block up and down and up and down so that you have the ability to lift very heavy starships. In fact, maybe starships that have 100 tons of payload in them up to the top of the booster. Make your stack, do your launch. Folks, my name is John Galloway. I'm with NSF. If you're listening in German or Spanish, you got Adrian and Alex over there. Or you can listen with no commentary at all by changing to the Klingon track where the audio is cloaked. But for now, that's the end of this Starbase update. Thanks for the theme for catching it, and we will see you nerds later.